continue what we started last time about the sheer strength of reinforced concrete beams. I just run you quick through this. We discussed the shear failure and the friction failure, the difference between the two and the type of cracks involved in both of these two failures. Uh, friction cracks is going to be right in the middle, most likely it's going to be vertical. And shear cracks is going to be towards the end of both of these two sides of the beam, adjacent to the support, it's going to be on an angle. And this is what we call here diagonal tension. To resist it, the best way when you add ties. So you have here two components to resist the shear. First component is going to be the concrete. Second component is going to be the reinforcing steel that you put in the vertical direction, which we call here ties. Uh, we discussed uh, this uh, stress element. And we discussed the direction of shear. And this gave you the ties that you put there. And eighths of V, this gave you the shear reinforcement. So the bottom reinforcement, as we said, this is called here A sub S. So total. You see here, this here, what we call AS for the flexure, and this what you call here A sub V. So A sub V is giving the reinforcing, supporting the shear. And uh, if I decide here to put additional rebar, like vertical rebar, like a tie or something, right? So in this case, instead of having just two legs, it's going to be three legs. Sometimes we put four legs. And AV is going to be the total cross section area that you're going to be cutting through. AB is giving the cross section of just one rebar, like in here. 0.11 is giving only for one rebar of this time. For two legs, I'm going to multiply here by two. So it's going to be very important that you understand the term AV and how do you figure it out. I don't want you to be confused between AV and AS. They are, both of them refers to cross section area of a steel. AS refers to the flexure, which means that you're using the moment. This gives you intention. And this one here is giving you for the shear to resist the shear strength, to give you some shear strength. Critical section, as we discussed, we have here four cases. We say it's going to be a D distance away from face of support. Support means a column in this case. D distance, you're going to come here, D distance away from the face of support, and then you find out the shear demand. So to find out the shear demand, it's not going to be right at face of support. Usually it's going to be a D distance. Now, the financial support is going to be the actual support. So in this case, here's the actual support, not this. And this happens a lot in bridges. In a case like this, when you have a point load within the D distance, the shear, the critical section for shear is going to be right at face of support. Unless you have it in tension, like what we discussed here, is going to be also at face of support. Now, what's going to be in tension? If this support is going to be in tension. So the critical section is going to be at face of support. If the support is giving compression, like in this case, this gave you the potential or expected failure in shear and VU is going to be a D distance away from face of support. To find out V sub U, we're going to be load using this load combinations. So this load combinations, they can be used for shear, they can be used for flexure, which means moment, they can be used also for axial load and for torque for whatever load that you have. So if you're doing a structure design, you're not doing your service analysis or service check for the performance of the concrete beam. Again, if you're doing a structure design, which means strength design, like what it says here. You need to try all of these load combinations and pick the one that controls, which means the one is going to give you the highest load. If all what you have is going to be dead load on life load, therefore, in this case, you need only these two equations. And of course, if there is no float pressure, like this, not a tank, there's now no soil, no temperature effect. All of this is going to be canceled out. You're going to stay only with dead load on life load. If there is no seismic, no wind in the structure member, you don't really need to try any of that. So it's going to be only at the top to load combinations. So let's say with that now, we have the shear demand on the beam. And of course, we're going to see an example and see exactly how we're going to be determining the shear demand on the beam. Now let's see the trends. The trends is going to be based on the concrete and the steel. You have a component for the concrete strength, another component for the steel strength. Phi factor is going to be just one value, the 0.75. So you don't really need a graph to figure out this phi factor. Just take it 0.75 for shear only. Someone here is going to say, how about for flexure? Where is the phi factor? 
Any other calls refactor in that case? Uh, point 0.9 to 0.65. Yeah, very good. Okay. So in this slide set number four, we discussed the trend reduction factor. We said for beams and columns, it's going to be range between 0.9 to 0.65. This gave you the range, right? For shear, it's going to be just one value, 0.75. So this fee factor is going to be for flexion. This is not for shear. The one for shear is going to be only one value, the 0.75. Concrete strength. Is going to be given by this equation. So here's the concrete strength, P sub C. It's going to be equal to two, it's just a factor. We call the shear factor. Remember this, please. This is called the shear factor. Multiplied by the root of F prime C, which is a concrete strength in P sign, multiplied by the width of the web, multiplied by the depth. So in this case, if the beam is like a T like this, the depth is going to be the distance from here, from the top compression to the tensile steam, to where it happens, right? And the width is going to be the width of the web, not the flange, the width of the web, not the flange. And there is a limit here. It says maximum screw root of F prime C is going to be 100 PSI, which means maximum F prime C is going to be what? You can see this max here, F prime C, max is going to be equal to 10,000 PSI in the same answer. So what happens if you have 12,000? I can say, well, screw root of the 12,000 is going to be limited to 100. So it's true that you're going to have a, a value higher than 100 PSI, but at the end, you're going to be using 100 PSI as a max. How about the steel now? The steel is trend when it comes to shear. It's given by this equation here. Now let's try to understand this equation and again repeat the meaning of this A sub V. Here is the shear strength. Does this include the phi in this equation? We can say no. At the end, you need to multiply by phi factor. So this is like Vs in the nominal level, like in here. You see, at the end, you need to multiply by phi factor of 0.75. Let's try to understand the equation and see all of this term that we're looking at. Understand that D is going to be the depth from compression to the tensile reinforcement. So now D is good, right? We understand D. FYT, FY is going to be the yield trends for the steel. The reason that we call it T because it's going to be for the thighs. In some cases, the yield trends of the thigh is different from the yield trends of the longitudinal rebars, the bottom ones. So now we understand the D depth. And if yt is going to be daily trends for the tie itself, just in case if you decide to use different steam. But usually we use 6k sign now for all the steam. Now I have two terms, a, v, and s. I'm trying to understand what is this a, v, and s. So I'm going to go back here to my illustration. I guess s, you know what is s? The space in between times. So you can decide on this. This is going to be part of your design. How about AV? AV is going to be for the ties. Ties is going to be resisting the shear and provide the shear trends to the beam. So AV is going to be the total cross-section area that when you cut through this tie, you're going to be finding it out. And here's a section. You're going to be cutting here through the entire section to find out the amount of shear reinforcement. Amount of shear reinforcement is going to be equal to the cross-section area of this bar plus the cross-section area of this bar. That's why last time I put these two arrows. So in this case, I'm gonna say A sub V is gonna be equal to two times the cross-section area for the tie. This tie is number three. It has a cross-section area for just one rebar of 0.11. This tie, it has two legs. So in this case, A sub V is gonna be the total cross-section area for the tie reinforcement resisting the shear. Is going to be equal to 2 because I have here two legs applied by 0.11 square inch for each one of this uh, tie bar. Can I be looking here at another section? Let's say here's a beam section. Try to find out here AB. I'm going to say it is number 4. Let me write this down. I have number 4 for the tie.
Cross section area for number four for just one rebar. So I'm going to say here AB for number four is how much? Can someone help? Yes or no? Is this correct? Yes. Yes. Point C. Okay. Thank you. How many rebars I'm going to be cutting through? I'm going to say, okay, let me cut here. How many rebars? How many legs do I have for this time? Yes, A2. Therefore, A sub V, right? I'm going to write it here. A sub V equals 2 times 0 0.2. It's going to be 0.4 square inches for steam. It's good. It is very important that we are going to be providing this hook around the top rebars. So I'm expecting that I'm going to have here some rebar on the top, right? Some rebars here. And also some rebars at the bottom. Because the tie needs to go around this rebar and need to be anchored to it. Right? So a hook is really needed in the top. We can have the hooks this way. Meaning I can have the rebar like this. On the top like this. And also the bottom, exactly the same way. I need to have at least four rebars to consider this to be a tie. If you didn't put in the rebars on the top, this is not a tie. It's not gonna be working to resist the shear. So it really needs to be hooked around the top rebar. Because what's gonna happen when the shear would come to this tie, is gonna be pulling the tie down. So you're gonna have a force like this. And also you need to have some resistance. The force needs to be coming this way, right? If it is not hooked around the three bars, it's just gonna slide. And once it slides, there is no resistance. I'm gonna be looking at this tie combination or tie sets. I have here two of them, right? One is gonna be like this, and the other one is gonna be very similar to it, it just shifted. There's a little bit of an offset. And they happen in the same place. So there is no distance between this tie and between that tie. This distance is going to be between sets of ties. Am I clear on this? Yes or no? Can you repeat that? Okay. These two ties, they happen in the same location. They are right next to They are touching each other. Meaning, when you look at this, you're going to have like one tie like this, right? Let's say, and the other tie is going to be like this. They're going to be very close when you're touching each other. And of course, you're going to have the vertical legs. And we call this set of ties. Maybe you can have two or three or whatever, right? And the space in between each two sets of ties is going to be S. So I don't someone here to think that this tie is going to be here and like what you are looking here in the picture, this is going to be shifted like by a distance of S. No, both of these two ties, they have in the same place. They are touching each other. And between these two ties and between the other set of ties is going to be a distance of S. Now, let me check this out. I said, if I have here number four ties, I'm trying to find out here AV. How many rebars did I cut through? Four, I say, okay, four times 0.2 square inches is going to be 0.8 square inches. And this is going to be the total cross section area for the shear enforcement, A sub V. Now we understand the meaning of this A sub V by now. Am I correct? Yes or no? Yes. It's clear, everybody? Yes. Yes. All right, good. All right, so I guess all of these parameters are very clear to me. I understand them. Now, what happened when the depth goes higher? When this depth goes higher in value, would VS goes up or down? Up, up right? Up. How about AV, when you put more steel, you're gonna be gaining more strength. When you increase the spacing, which means that you put less reinforcing, what's gonna to happen to VS? 
goes down. It goes down. Makes sense. So I see this factor Z makes sense. Can I just put pounds of steel if the shear is not working because the cross section area? You can say no, you cannot put lots of tires. There's a limit. Limit goes to this Vs max. Vs max is going to be given by this equation, which means a Vs that you can use to resist the shear is going to be given by this equation, but it has a limit. And this limit is related to the concrete strength. So what is the, I mean, what is the worst case if I'd like to take the maximum strength for the steel and the concrete? Concrete is going to be two square root of a prime C, times this factor here, right? Times the cross section area. The steel is going to have a maximum of eight, which means both of them, when you add them together, is going to be ten square root of a prime C. Does it make sense? So what happens if you go beyond ten? Screw to V prime C, and you still have a problem with shear, which means your demand is more than the capacity. In a case like this, you cannot add more reinforcing. It means you need to change the depth of the beam, the width of the beam, or maybe the concrete strength. So if you are going to be taking the steel here all the way to the highest value in resistance or in resisting the shear, and you still have a problem with your shear design, you need to change the beam section. So the beam section itself, like width and depth, and maybe the strength of the concrete needs to change. Very similar to what we have in uh, flexure, like for uh, the moment demand and the way that you resist it, you're gonna be putting the reinforcing steel. Also, we have minimum steel for the flexure. Also here, we have minimum steel for the shear. It's gonna be given by this equation. Let's go through it now. 0.75 is not the fee factor, it's just a factor there. It's like a constant. Screw to the prime C. Of course, this needs to be in PSI. You remember that? In PSI. Times BW the width, times S the spacing. Divide by the yield trends for the time. Or it's going to be also by this equation. Same parameters, BW, S, and FYT. When you have two minimums, which one would you like to consider? The higher of the two or the lower of the two? Lower. Lower. How's that? Let's say one of them, I run the analysis here, and based on this equation, it gives me, I'm just throwing here a number, let's say 0.5 square inches of a steel. Okay? And I run the number for this, and this equation gives me here 0.4 square inches. What's the minimum that I can use in my equation in my analysis and design? The 0.4. Not the 0.5? 0.5. 0.5 or the 0.4? 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4? Okay, let me check. Let me think about this. I did, I did the AV analysis and it turned that all what I need pays on this equation. You can say here, pays on the demand. You can say, I need only 0.3 square inches. Of course, you'd like to use 0.3, but you're going to be facing this issue for the minimum, right? So you are going to be looking at this one first, and then you say, oh, I need to bring it to 0.4. Otherwise, I'm not satisfying this condition for this equation. But in this case, I'm satisfying this condition. So if I'm going to try here to go with 0.4, it's going to be okay for this equation because I went above the needed. And it's going to be also okay with this one because I provided the minimum needed. But when I go to the other condition here, I see that I still need 0.5. I provide only 0.4. So I'm going to say something is wrong. I need to put here at least 0.5. So at the end of the day, if I use 0.4, I'm not going to be complying with this condition. But if I use here 0.5, I'm going to be covering all the requirements. I'm going to be covering all of the three conditions. Usually when you have two minimums, you take the higher of the two. When you have two maximums, you take the lower of the two. Let's make it happen. If we're talking here about maximum, if we're talking about maximum, then you have going to have your two maximum, two limits for the maximum. You cannot use this one because if you use the top, you are violating here the bottom the lower maximum, if you like. Same thing in the bottom. This is going to be minimum needed. This is going to be minimum needed. 
If you're going to go with this, you're not good with this one, right? So you need to provide the higher of the two minimums. So in this case, I'm going to be taking the higher of these two. An example. It says here, determine the shear strength at the cosine. If I give you here any beam, the standard is going to be the span of the beam is going to be center to center. We discussed this last time. We said the standard, if I give you here a beam span, if I had said beam span is 20 feet, it means from the center of the column to center of the column. All right? If I say the beam depth and I have a T-section, the beam depth is going to be from the top of the flange, like what we have done here. So this is going to be like the common, right? Let me put it here for you. The say T section. What is the depth of the beam when you have here a T section? Depth of the beam is going to include the slab thickness. So if I say D is going to be including the slab thickness, right? If I have a beam and they say the span is 22 feet and then didn't mention the center line. In this case, it's going to be the center line to center line by default. Why it is important in this case? Because I need to go D distance away from face of support. Otherwise, something is wrong, right? You're going to be taking a higher value that you really need to take. It says here the beam clear span is 20 feet. Clear span means from face of column to face of column, face of support to face of support. They give me the dead load, they give me the life load, trends of concrete, and the trends of the steam. Depth is given because it's going to be 16 minus one and a half minus, if you remember this here, number four, right? So I'm going to have here 13 and a half. And the width is going to be 10 inch. The size is going to be number four at 14 inch in center. So the spacing S is going to be 14 inch. This is the same. This 14 inch, this problem here is going to be the same as this S. It's going to be like 14 inch, the spacing between a couple of times. So, okay. Let me look here at the demand because number one, I need to see the demand. The, the ask here to check that decency, which means compare the trends to the demand. How do you do here demand? Demand, you need to put it on the ultimate level. So at any time, if you're doing your analysis in your midterm, or let's say in your project or a homework, and you are facing this question of, how can I combine the loads? Should I just add dead load to life load? You can say, no. We went through this before. We know that we have this load factors. So whenever you see load combinations, you need to try both of these two load combinations. Even if you try this and you know that this gave be 292 and this gave be 21 and say this gave be controlling, you need to show steps. You need to show it to me that you know that we have here two load combinations. The load on life load was given as 1.7, 1.5 and 0.7. We're gonna try both of these two load combinations. We end up by this load value and this gave be controlling as W ultimate. Now let me look at the beam. It says here the beam span is 20 feet, 22, center to center, and clear span is 20 feet. Okay. Here's the beam span, like what we have discussed. Here's going to be center to center, you see? Center, which means support to center, support. So when you do structure analysis, actually you're going to be going here center to center. Because the column itself, it has size, and the column is two feet, like what we discussed. The column itself is going to be two feet. One foot is going to be from this side and one foot from this side. In that case, if you have here 22, you're going to have here one foot from this side and one foot from the other side. You're going to have clear span of 20 feet. So actually, in this problem, it didn't give me the column size, but I was able to come up with a column size because I have the center to center span, 22. Also, I have the clear span. So I'm going to say I have here two feet one foot from each side, right? To take it from the clearest pan to the center to center. By default, the center to center span is just the span. If someone's gonna say the span is 30 feet, I would understand that the span means center of column to center of column, not the clearest span. Are we good about this issue? Let's say, okay. So I guess I know what's the center to center. Was a clear span from face to face. Yeah, like what it shows here. Now, the depth of the meme is 13 and a half. I know that. 
which means the critical section of shear is going to be at the distance away from phase of support. So where's phase of support? Here's support, phase of support, column, phase of column. The distance away from it, 13 and a half inch. I said, okay, let me walk here 13 and a half inch and go to this critical section and try and find out how much is the shear at this point. So your shear demand V sub U, it's not gonna be the reaction, it's gonna be the shear at this point, according to this diagram. You guys, you have taken construction analysis before in statics, you should be able to draw this shear diagram, come up with this shear value. Ultimate load is 292. If you multiply by 22, divide by two, it's gonna give you here the reaction. So your reaction is, this gave you what? This gave you the total reaction on the column. Is gonna be at a point, is gonna be 32.12. At phase of support, you can take 20 feet times 292 divided by two, and then you can call this, if you like, you can call this R sub U. And R sub U is gonna be the shear at this point, which is 29.2. How do you take the shear value from 29.2 to 25? You need to look at this distance. This distance can be equal to D, 13 and a half. Now we'd like to put it in feet. The drop in the shear value from here to there is going to be equal to what? The drop, which means a change only. It's going to be equal to the load, ultimate load that you have here, multiply by this distance, D. So we're going to say, if I take here 13 and a half, D distance, put it in feet, multiply by W, this gives you the amount of reduction in the shear from the force at the face of support to the force at the critical section for shear. So this section, I'm gonna call it here critical section for shear. Where does it happen? You can see it happens here, exactly right here. Now your V sub U is gonna be the 25, not the 32. 32 is just too much and it's gonna be right at the center of the column. 29, which is phase of support, is not to be considered according to the code. The code says, I can give you here a break and you can take it at the distance, so let me use this. Now here's what happened. Your shear here is 2592. This is just a method here to find out the shear at any given point. You can do it the way you want it, as long as you get to the right answer when it comes to the shear demand at the distance away from phase of support. Any questions? No questions? Is D given typically? Yeah, good question. Is it given here? 13 and a half? Is it maybe the 14 inch? You remember this example? Slide set, can you please take a note of this? Slide set four. Slide number 14. How did we find out this depth for the tension? Why did we say two and a half in the center of the rebar? So it is either it's gonna be given to you as D or you figure it out exactly the same way we have done here. Any other questions? What, what exactly is the critical section? Uh, critical section is going to be the location at which you're going to be taking the shear demand at. Like in here, what is the critical section for shear? You can say, according to this diagram that we discussed last time and also this time, it's going to be right here, right? It's going to be critical. Now I understand what it happens here. How about on this side? I'm gonna say it happens here, right? How about here? I'm gonna say, well, in this case, it happens here. And here, I'm gonna say it happens right here. Critical section for shear. It happens right here. Are we good now about critical section for shear? Or no, not really.
Yes or no? Do you guys have any issues with the critical section for share? How do you find it? Where it is at? How do you find out the sheer demand at this critical section for share? No good. questions? Okay, no questions means we cover this issue, right? Uh, what slides, slide set was D again? Was that slide 14? For what? Uh, define D. To find D, okay. But are we good about critical section first? Can you please answer this? Uh, I'm good. I'm not okay. sure about Great. Me. Okay. Thank you. Slide set four. And this is going to be slide 14. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have the demand. We're able to find out the demand, right? Now let's find out the strength of the concrete beam. I know depth here is 13 and a half inch. We have done this before. So let me find here the concrete strength. Concrete strength is gonna be PVC, right? Don't forget the entire strength of the beam is called PVS plus PVC, both of them multiplied by phi. So PVC, which means the concrete strength is 0.75, the phi factor, times two, times the width, times the depth, square root of f prime c, at the end, divided by a thousand, the whole thing. I'm gonna show you here where this equation come from. So bear with me, this here slide 17. I'm gonna go back here to this slide. Two, square root of f prime c, bw, the width of the width, times d. This gives you the concrete only. And of course, multiply by the phi factor. So we're gonna say here, 10 inch, 13 and a half, 4,000, and two, okay? Two times 10 inch, 13 and a half, square root of V prime C divided by a thousand is gonna be 12.8. How much was the demand again? You don't recall the demand? 25.92, let's say 26 kips. So concrete is not enough to support the sheer demand. Now, let me see how much the steel is gonna be helping us. I have this equation for the steel. I'm gonna go back also and look at it and say, here's the equation for the steel. AV, FY, D divided by S. How much is AV? I have number four. I have two legs. So I was gonna say with the meaning of two legs. When you cut the section here, how many legs did you cut through? You can see here, two rebars. Number four, the point two square inch. S is gonna be 14. FY, 60. So, okay, good. You try my equation. Here is AV two times 0.2 for two number four, two legs times number four, 60 K side, the depth 13 and a half, the spacing 14 inch. So I was gonna say, who gave you the space? I mean, was it given to us? Was the spacing given or did I come up with it? It was given. It was given right on the problem. And number four also was given. So, okay. Here is VVS. Let me take this. 23 multiplied by 0.75, now I have 17. Add both of these two values together. I have 30 kips, 30.16 for the threads of the beam. How much demand do I have? 25, great, the beam is good. This beam is good, can resist the shear. Now, someone's gonna say, what happened if I didn't take the D distance away from face of support, find out the shear demand? Would my beam be okay? You say no, because the reaction here, if you like, just to take the reaction and compare to your capacity, your reaction 32, it wouldn't be okay. Now, I appreciate that the code would let me reduce the shear a little bit. And with that, I was able to make it work with number four at 14 inch, etc. That was the shear design, right? How about the minimum reinforcement? Do you think I provide enough reinforcement? I'm gonna say here, let me try and put these two equations. 0.75 is just a constant. It is not the phi factor, right? Screw root of 4,000. 10 inch by 14 inch, the spacing, divided by 60,000. In this case, I need to use this as 60,000. This is what you need for AV minimum, 0.11. Try the other equation. I'm getting 0.12. Now, which one I need to use? I'm gonna say the highest of the two. 
it's gonna be 0.12. This one controls. How much did you provide? Gonna go back here. I provided two legs, number four, the 0.4 square inch. So we provide 0.4 square inch. More than the minimum. Good. So we're done. We check the minimum reinforcement needed for shear. So okay. Now let me look at the shear diagram, try to understand it more, which is our last slide in the shear business. I said, okay, I have the force, which is right here at face of support, was equal to 29. Also, I have the reaction with 32, but I didn't use it. Because I said that whatever is gonna be within the column and this piece of the column is gonna be supported by the column itself. So the shear in this section here is going to be supported by the column. And this shear here is supported by the beam. This is where I check the shear demand versus capacity right at this section, in this interface, for a demand of 25.9 caps. Let me look here at the shear diagram. It's going to be the middle of the span, right? At the middle of the span, we're going to be hitting zero shear, right? Here's a column. Up to here is give you a column, right? So this amount of shear is taken by the column. You see this 29? Up to here is taken by the column and you don't really need to worry about it. What do I mean by up to here? Up to this section here, up to the distance away from face of support. Now where's face of support? You can see this give you face of column, face of support. This is give you face, column. This was support, which is right this line here. Now, where is the critical section for shear? I'm gonna say this is giving my critical section for shear. Great. So this part here is supported by the concrete column in this piece, in this hunch. And this gave you the part supported by the beam itself. If you draw a line here for PVC, you see this line? You just draw here horizontal line, right? Then you know that this shaded area is resisted by the concrete. So concrete is resisting this. And the remainder of the diagram is gonna be resisted by the shear, by the steel. This is why I shaded here in blue, because I said, well, this section here is resisted by the concrete beam and this Shear demand is resisted by the ties. Okay. Now, another question is going to come. Do I really need to satisfy this minimum reinforcement when it comes to shear? You can say, not really. In some cases, you don't really have to. Let me go back here to the memory reinforcement and see what the code say. I'm going to go back here to slide 12. This two minimum reinforcement conditions you need to apply them when the demand is more than half of the concrete strength. Look at this. It says ties are not needed when V sub U is less than or equal VVC divided by two one half of the concrete strength, meaning if the concrete itself is gonna be resisting, according to this, 12.8. If the shear demand is gonna be lower than 6.4, you don't really need to put any times. But if the shear demand is more than 6.4, in this case, you need to provide ties based on this minimum requirements. I say, okay, in this case, let me draw here a line for one half of the shear strength. Once it hits this slope line for the shear demand, which means the shear diagram, you're gonna say this little section, this little triangle, you don't really need to put any ties or any stirrups. And beyond that to the left, right, you need to put here some ties. It is true that maybe the concrete from this point to this point is good, 
but you still need to put some minimum reinforcement, right? No questions? It's your time here to ask questions before I change the subject. So if, like in the center of the beam, uh, how, how great of a distance can you go without having ties? Is there any requirement there? No, but generally speaking, when once you start to put some ties in a beam in practice, in actual practice, you just keep it on. So if let's say this section here needs some ties, right? You just put it throughout the entire beam. Okay. And um, yeah, because I guess what something I've seen in the past is they kind of increase the ties closer to the support. This is true. And then yes. maybe, maybe less throughout the rest. Is it yes. Yeah. So let's say the shear demand, you know that the shear demand is going to be high in this section, right? So in this area here, you're going to put lots of ties. And once you come close here to the center, you're going to put the minimum. So okay. first, you start by putting the minimum throughout, right? Whenever you have an area with a little bit of high shear demand, you start to add more ties, just to make it stronger in this case. Okay, but typically you wouldn't want to leave like a large section of beam without any ties at all. Then. Exactly. You don't do that. Even if you don't need it, you're going to just take the minimum and just run it across the entire length of the beam. Okay. All right. uh, any other questions? So the uh, the section to the left, is that shear resisted by the column? Yeah, this section here, by the column and this little bit, this hunch here. Like in this box, the column is taking this. So I was gonna say, the column actually is taken only up to here, right? The physical column. But you know that this piece, if I may zoom in here, this piece, this triangle, is gonna be acting as one piece with the column. So this is why I said, well, this area here or this shear demand is going to be resisted by the column. This is why our shear demand is 25.9 only, because this side is going to be taken by the column, this side is going to be taken by the beam. Um, for the clear stand, do we always take uh, like one foot from both sides, or is it always given? No, it's going to be given. Someone is going to tell you about it, right? Like in here, it says total span or center to center is 22 and the clear is 20. Oh. Unless I give you the total span and then I give you the column size. If I said, let's say the column size is three feet by three feet, right? And the clear span is 22. Let me make this problem up. Okay, let me comment on this. Let's say span equals 22 feet. Column length. How much? Three feet. How much is the clear span? How much? 20 feet. 20? Oh, 90. Make sense or no? Yeah. Why? Thank you. Why? Why is that? Explain it to me, please. Um, because we were trying to, for the clear spend, do we always take it to get the, the shear diagram or to find out the shear? Yeah, but this, let's try here to understand. Just keep this number in mind here. Let me just copy it and go here. Let's say I have another beam, right? But the column length is going to be a little bit greater in length. So I'm going to say this length from here to there now becomes one and a half because the column length is three feet. So it means one and a half in this side, one and a half in this side. And also again, one and a half in this side, one and a half in the other side. So the clear span is gonna be equal to the center to center span subtracting one half of the column from here, one half of the column from here, which means subtracting three feet is gonna be 19 feet. Now let's look here at the shear diagram. Usually I'd like to provide the minimum ties. So I'm gonna say, let me put the ties here throughout. This give you the ties, right? Throughout this. Put some ties here. I'm going to be using only one half, one half of this diagram. I don't really need to show you both sides of the diagram, right? Why? 
Whatever applies to the right side will also apply to the left side. And I don't really wanna leave the beam without ties. So the ties can be just continuous, right? It's gonna be running throughout the entire length of the beam. Here also I'm gonna be adding a tie. Now in some cases you just add the minimum. In some cases, not in this specific beam example. And once you look at the beam this way, you say, I have here lots of shear, right? And the minimum that you provide here is not enough. You're gonna say, to how much? You're gonna say, to this section here. So this side here, the ties that you put is not enough, but this ties is gonna be enough. You're gonna say, let me add here some ties. means whenever I need more shear trends, I'm gonna put here this time. So at the beginning we have many times, I'm gonna start here to increase the spacing and add will provide less times. Any questions? Let me change the subject here. Did you guys see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Be sure that you print it out. Okay. This gave you the formula sheet that you're going to have in hand when you are taking your midterm. We're going to be using proctory, meaning before you start the exam, you need to show this piece of paper, both sides, and show it to the camera. Right? If you didn't do that, it means that you added more equations to this formula sheet. And this is gonna be a cheating case. So, am I clear on this? Yes. So I guess we say that. I hope it's clear to everybody. I was gonna say I didn't know or I didn't hear it. It is recorded, and you guys usually you're gonna be watching the video later on. So even if you miss it, and you're not watching these videos, it means that you're not really studying, and it's gonna be your issue. So please be sure that you print this. Right? Don't wait to the exam day to print it. Be sure that you have it in hand. Sometimes Proctoria wouldn't let you open this on the side when you're doing the exam. So be sure that you have a copy of this. Are we good about this? Yes. Yes. Angel, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, now can you please tell everybody what should you do with this formula sheet? I'd like to hear from you. Telling everyone. Yes. Go um, ahead. Print it and that's it. Don't put anything on it. When are you gonna print it? Before exam day. So not, not right before right. the exam, right? Otherwise you may not find the printer. Right after today's class would be a great time. Okay. Are you going to be adding any equation to any of these two sides of this face on the other side or no? Can no, I add a couple of equations or an example or I cannot? Yeah, just example problems. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just leave it as it is, everybody. Okay. And don't forget, again, can you please talk about the showing this to Procuria, to the camera? Yes, show both sides. Completely. Before the exam, during the exam, right? Once the exam starts, you're gonna be taking this, show both sides, just to prove that you didn't add anything to it. Yeah, once the, not during your camera test, once the exam is actually starting. Okay. A question here from Desire, what is the question? No, Desire is good. Um, okay, uh, Eddie. What do you mean, Eddie, if you have two pages? Go ahead. I think it means if he prints it and the page is not front and back. So what's going to happen, Eddie? You tell me what's going to happen. <laughs> well, I'm going to be looking at it and say, well, he has two pieces of paper. And the camera showed two pieces of paper. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that much. All right, guys, any questions before we go? Yes, for midterm, next time we're going to be doing the review.
I'm, I'm looking at it and it looks like we don't have uh, equations for uh, shear. So should we expect not to do that on the midterm? Absolutely. Good observation. Any homework you recommend us looking over for the exam? Yes, you're going to have one for the compression state. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be training. It's going to be more for, for the flexure. I know that we are, we are done with the flexure, but it's going to be more for all the training for your exam. I have a question here that I'd like to answer. What exactly will be on the midterm? We're gonna discuss it next time, but it's gonna be everything that you have taken, but do not include the shear slide set. And will we have access to uh, graded homeworks? Or uh, is there, am I, maybe I missed it on Canvas. Do you have it? Can you check, please? Uh, it, it, I have the grade, but uh, the there's no document to download with any corrections or things of that nature on it. Well, it's specific to your homework? Y yeah, yeah. Our, our individual no. homework. No, no, we don't do that. Um, yes, second. Let me look at this. I guess Ferris came in late, right, Ferris? You're here, Ferris. Okay, do we have uh, Diana? Yes, 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 yes. I was just seeing it. Thank you. Um, Diana. Is Diana here? No, okay. Okay, one thing that I'd like here to explain for quick, which is about this slide set here. Just want to explain here something. You guys, you know how to find out A, correct? The way that you find it, you set tension equals to compression. Here's the tension, compression, you set them equal to each other. When AS goes up, what's your expectation when this value here goes up? What's going to happen to A? It's going to increase as well. And go up. Okay. When the stress in the steel is going to be going up, what happened to A? Goes up as well. Okay. Is this the actual tension in the steel or this like the capacity point? This is going to be for the full strength, right? Like this is going to be like the capacity point. That's, right? that's what we assume, right? Yeah, we assume this is going to be the maximum. We said maximum stress in the steel is going to be F sub Y. But how about if the moment is lower than the external moment is lower than the maximum moment, which means phi and man. I was going to say, what do you mean? I'm not clear on this. I guess, okay. Assume here's a beam. Moment diagram. Let's say positive is gonna look like this. Don't we do something like this? When you put it in the tension side, some people would say, no, we don't do it this way. We do it on the other side, right? Some people would like to do it, the tension is given the top, I guess, right? But let's say this to give you the moment diagram. 
If this is a moment diagram and your max moment, I'm gonna say this is gonna be max moment, m max, m u max is equal to phi m n. It means right at this point, the stress in the steel is gonna be equal to F sub y. So we're gonna say right at this point, Fs equals Fy, correct? Right, only at this point. But if I'm gonna go here to a section, this is the quarter point of the span. The external moment is gonna be equal to the internal actual moment, not the strength. So in this case, the stress in the steel here is gonna be maybe half of the stress of the steel here. So let's say roughly at this point, Fs is gonna be equal to 0.5 Fy. You guys agree on this? You understand what I'm trying to say? Because you can simply say, right at the support, m equal to zero. No moment, no tension to steel. Fs equals zero. I'm talking here about the actual stress. Do you guys agree with me? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. It means the tension force itself, this F sub S, is gonna reduce once you move from here to there, the actual one. So it's gonna happen to A value. Is A value, the actual A value, is gonna be the same here as here or no? It's gonna be different. So I'm gonna say in this case, it's gonna be equal to this value here because the stress is gonna be equal to F sub Y. So when the stress drops down, when this stress here drops down, right? And the steel is giving the same because the steel is giving the same in here. What happens to the A value? Will it go up or goes down? Let's say when the stress is gonna be going down, A is gonna be coming down. And also C is gonna be coming down. What is C? Depth of neutral axis. Meaning neutral axis here, if I may put a tribe there, right? Neutral axis here can be at this point in this location, let's say in here. And neutral axis here is gonna be a little bit higher. Why higher? Because A is gonna be smaller in this location than that location. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, any questions before we uh, let you go? Is there going to be another submittal for this weekend, or are we skipping? Um, yes. You guys you asked me if there's a homework or submittal, and they said it's going to be a, another practice problem on the flexure strength. But it's going to have the compression still in there. It's going to be more of a practice to get ready for the midterm. All right. Please go ahead and sign out. No, no problem. Go ahead and sign out, and see you next time.